and gentlemen, here she is, the hilarious Kathy Griffin. be making fun of Governor Rick Perry. Don't think. Oh, come on. The guy's a comedian's dream. Are you kidding me? I was just backstage with him doing his multiplication tables, and the Mensa people are going to hold off on the application. Look, does Rick Perry know that women's clinics are like for like pap smears too? They're not abortion clinics. I mean, although, you know, I don't know what he's gonna do, so I actually had an abortion in the car. Just, you know, time's a-wasting, and look, I'm 53, my ovaries are two raisins, I could put them in cereal, but still. I just think the governor should just get one pap smear and see if he likes it, and then let him decide. What about the Michael Kors Liza, Liza look? Yeah. Yes, I, okay, so I can't do stand up in heels anymore because honestly, it's just too painful for a tired old drag queen like myself. <laughs> this tired hooker cannot take it. There are so many sequins just lost up in my pussy at this point. <laughs> So I got asked to present at the daytime Emmys. Hear me out, hear me out, don't judge, don't you judge. And I got to introduce Ozzy Osbourne who was performing. So this is, a, this is my idea of a really good night, right? I'm gonna be honest, I brought the younger boyfriend. Don't judge, don't judge, don't you dare judge. You guys, it's even worse now because I had a birthday last week, so I'm just gonna tell you the numbers. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm not gonna act like it's okay, because it's not. But I will say, gays, don't you dare judge me. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. I'm 53, he's 34. Fifty-three shades of gray. Fifty-three shades of gray. Yeah. Right here. I am a whore role model. Look at me. Yes. All right. So granted, the guy's a little too young for me, but like I said, what the hell? So I bring him to this award show because Ozzy Osbourne is going to perform, and this guy is a straight guy, and it's exciting, and there's only one Ozzy. Okay, so I sit down, and I sit next to Bethany Frankel, who I've met, you know, several times, and all she's doing is bitching about being here. Ugh, I can't believe it. Ugh, this is so dealist. I'm on the dealist like you. Ugh, I want to go home. Ugh, I can't stand people. And I'm like, well, good for you, because I'm not moving. Good for you. You can have all those feelings and leave early, but I can just tell by the makeup of this crowd, I am not going anywhere. All right. And then Dr. Drew, who I've known since the radio days, is two people away, and he's so sweet, but he knows the deal. He knows to be a little cautious around me, because he knows where all the bodies are buried, and who's doing what drug, and where, and what time, and so I'm always listening to his shit. I mean, there's no boring conversation with Dr. Drew, ever. You know, he's probably got one of those syringes from Pulp Fiction in his, in his bag, where he just puts it in something like, you know, come back to life! You know, I don't know what, I'm not leaving Dr. Drew's side, ever. And then there's Kris Jenner, who's of course tried to make the deal with me. You know, she said, and she's very friendly by the way, and she's actually said, can you please stop calling my daughters dirty whores? <laughs> and she was like, now that Kim is a mom, and I was like, oh, mm, <laughs> You know I don't make 
the deal, San Antonio. There's no, I don't make the deal. It's all about you. It's all about what you want. But she is actually nice, and she's nicer to me than she should be, that's for sure. And she had a picture of the baby on the phone, and she kept hiding it from me, saying, I'm not going to show you this picture of baby Northwest. And I was like, what am I going to do? Emblazon it in my brain and then send it out via Instagram magically? Like, okay, I mean, babies all look alike to me. I don't even like kids, so... It's probably just a blob. All right, so... See, that's why I have to have a young boyfriend. Can you imagine me as a parent in any way, shape, or form? No. So anyway, I'm backstage, and Ozzy Osbourne is about to perform, and I'm going to introduce him. And then there is a pyramid of five-hour energy drinks. Yeah. With a little card that says, please do not touch for Mr. Osbourne only. So keep in mind, he's newly sober, so I get it. He's got his energy drinks. I don't know what's in five-hour energy drinks. But, you know, it sounds like they make you extremely energetic. Uh, That's all I know. And what I saw him do was take one bottle of five-hour energy drink, rip off the top like the head of a bat, drink it, and then throw it on the floor. Then a second one, down it, throw it on the floor. Third one, down it, throw it on the floor. Fourth, fifth one, five bottles of five-hour energy drink. (laughs) This man had 25 hours of energy (laughs) in his stomach prior to me working up the nerve to go say hi. So I'm watching him drink five five five-hour energy bottles, and then I turn to the boyfriend. He's like, don't don't say hi. Don't just leave. Just let him... (laughs) He's in the zone, he's in the zone. And I said, well, if I'm gonna introduce him, I have to at least you know, see what he wants me to say. So I go up to him and I said, excuse me, Mr. Osborne, my name is Kathy Griffin, I'm a comedian, I'll be bringing you out tonight. Is there anything specific you would like me to say? And he just goes, amazing! <laughs> okay, so I was like, oh, and? that you won Grammys. Like, I'm trying to just make, you know, be professional. So then, it's time for me to bring him on stage, and he's behind me with the band, and they're all talking, and they're british talk, and all I can think of is how his belly is filled with 25 hours of energy. <laughs> and everything to him is amazing! And Sharon's looking from the audience like, you better be sober, I swear to God, I've had it. I will go on the talk and talk about it, you know I will. And. So I bring him out, and let me just say, he sings Crazy Train, Mom, I'm Coming Home. He freaking brought the house down, right? So it was incredible. I go back to my table, and I'm just going, oh my God, wasn't that a great performance? And everyone's on their feet, and Bethany Frankel still wants to leave. And I'm like, don't let me stop you. All right, so I just thought that was amazing. Even Kris Jenner is like scrolling the phone, but at least she was there. And, And then I see Dr. Drew's wife go to the ladies' room, the public ladies' room at the hotel, and she comes back, and she whispers something in Dr. Drew's ear where I can tell something's going down in the ladies' room. Okay. Now, you know my ear is like a big Chia pet, basically. I water it every day, and it grows, because I'm not missing one thing. Not in a night like this, no. So I turned to her, and I was just like, um, hey, what's going on? I uh, saw you come back from the ladies' room, almost as if, you know, something had happened. And she was like, oh, no, I think um, one of the soap stars uh, passed out in the stall. I'm on that. I am on that. I swear to God, I then see Dr. Drew run up to Dr. Lisa Masterson from The Doctors, Then the two of them run up to Dr. Oz from Dr. Oz, and all three of them run to the ladies' room. All right, so now you know my ass followed all three of those doctors. And by the time I got there, they had the nerve to not let me in because of the police caution tape. All right, so apparently one of the girls passed out, and she was okay, and I guess they sent her on her way, but just the idea of every daytime doctor running to the assistance of like a wasted soap star is so funny to me, because I love those woo girls, and you'll see them later tonight, and you know who you are. They're the girls that are gonna go out in the strappy dress in the cold weather. They're wasted. They're carrying the shoes like this, right? They start having a girl fight with each other. 
Brianna, you are never my friend. <laughs> Shut up, Trina. <laughs> Candy, I feel like you don't even get me. <laughs> Be quiet, Jezebel. All right, so... And usually there's a cardboard bachelorette tiara, right? That's all bent. But I have to say, the best one I've ever seen is a couple that I saw on the street, and you've all seen this couple. So, first of all, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm warning you, you're gonna see my beeve. I'm gonna shoot the beeve. Anything for a laugh. I do, I am wearing underwear, but you're probably gonna see some scary stuff you can never get out of your brain. I apologize for that, I apologize for that, but I have to illustrate the point, because we have all seen this wasted girl on a curb of a crowded city. defense the girl was doing the shoot the beef crying puking in the gutter he was in and, and she kept saying you don't get me you don't get me and he was petting her hair while checking the scores on the phone <laughs> Kathleen you can't be making your political jokes in Texas for Christ's sake they're gonna shoot you dead. They, what they do is they shoot Catholics on Friday. They shoot Catholics on Friday. All right, shall we talk about Miley? All right, first of all, you've all seen the twerk heard around the world, but let's talk about it through the prism, through the eyes of your very own 93-year-old alcoholic, Maggie Griffin, shall we? You love her. You love her. First of all, she sends her regards. She sends her warnings. Kathleen, you can't be making your political jokes in Texas for Christ's sake. <laughs> They're gonna shoot you dead. They, what they do is they shoot Catholics on Friday. They shoot Catholics on Friday. Mom, turn off Fox News. No, I was watching Fox News, and they says it's legal now in Texas to shoot comedians on Thursdays. Mom, <laughs> I might have had a little too much to drink, but Bill O'Reilly says don't go. Okay, you know what? <laughs> Walk away from the Fox News, Maggie. But you can't deal with people. They love Fox News. It's like porn. It's like porn for them. <laughs> they believe it. They think it's real. What are you going to do? All right, so... So anyway, she, uh, she did warn me to not get political, so I've already broken that rule. And then, oh, I want you to know her advice. You know what would be nice, Kathleen? When you're down there in Texas, why don't you walk out and just tell real nice stories about nice people and not curse? <laughs> well, f*** that. Anyway, <laughs> I tried. I tried as long as I could. I thought... I'm gonna tell you the real reason Maggie isn't here and she's gonna be so mad at me because she doesn't get why this is funny. But if you have any relatives of a certain age, you know what it's about. So I want you to know I invited her. I said, Mom, why don't you come to San Antonio? We'll have a great time. The audience will love you. All that, trust me, I... So I'm gonna tell you why Maggie's not here because I know you love and accept her. She is not here because when I said, Mother, you know, whatever you want, we'll fly you first class, we'll put you up in a beautiful hotel. I can't go on a plane. What if I get the sh Kathleen Mary? <laughs> so then, no, no, I wish I was making this up. I was watching Fox News and they says that if you're on a plane, that if you say you got the sh and the pilot hears, they think you're an Al-Qaeda. <laughs> what? No, I was watching, I don't know if it was Hannity or what, but they says that now plane travel's different, so if you get the sh you can't tell a stew. I go, okay. We don't say stew anymore, Mom. We say flight attendant. Then they'll think I'm in Al-Qaeda. Nobody thinks you're in Al-Qaeda. But what if I have 
have to knock on the pilot's door to say, we have to make a stop, I have the shit. I go, well, well, then they would think you're in Al-Qaeda and you're also crazy. What are you talking about? So anyway, I, I forced my mother to watch the infamous Miley Cyrus twerk moment, and here's why. Granted, granted, I used a little trickery, and what I did could possibly be classified as elder abuse, but you know what? <laughs> I couldn't say, come upstairs and watch the Video Music Awards. She would never do that. So I had to say, mom, come upstairs, Murder, She Wrote is on. And <laughs> old people love Murder, She Wrote. Oh my God. Kathleen, it's with Angela Lansbury. He's such a classy lady. And she starts the episode writing a story about a crime. And then she gets immersed in the crime herself. And sometimes she solves it and then she writes the whole story. All right. So, um, so I had already watched the Video Music Awards and I knew the good parts, right? And I knew that my mom like may or may not know some of the stars. So if you recall, pre-Miley, it opens with my beloved Lady Gaga. Now I love Lady Gaga. I think she's legit. She went to Columbia. She plays instruments. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. So the, the whole award show started with a close-up of Lady Gaga's face, right? And then remember they pulled away and she was wearing a nun's habit. So that set your Maggie off. Jesus Christ, Kathleen Mary. You think it's real goddamn cute that your lady Gaha is in a nun habit. <laughs> Did you catch it? Gaha, lady Gaha. Now I, I know I should correct her. I know that morally I should have corrected her so that when she goes back to her retirement village, where by the way, they all sit around the cafeteria and it's like Heathers. I don't know if you know this. You know this? Yes. Did you know that? Yes. So in these retirement villages, it's vicious. It is high school all over again. You pick one table and you stick with it. And I swear to God, my mom is living Heather's and I think my mom is Shannon Doherty. <laughs> so my mother is livid with Lady Gaha and keeps calling her Lady Gaha. So I know this is gonna get good, right? All right, so then it's time for you know who. All right, so remember, it wasn't just about the twerking. Miley started coming out of a giant teddy bear head. Remember that? All right, so Maggie's a little half in the bag, and so she can't quite figure out what's going on. Why the Christ is a stuffed animal going down the aisle way at an awards show, Kathleen? All right, so then it opens, remember, and it opened with that stairwell and it kind of like malfunctioned. Like if you've ever been on just like a bad flight and they let you off by mistake on the tarmac and the stairway like bounces. And I've been on many and I love how they try to cover it as if it wasn't just somebody who didn't feel like getting off their brake and getting the jet bridge. <laughs> I've been on that flight. So it kind of like bounced on the floor and then Miley comes out and she starts humping the stairwell cause she'll hump anything. And, <laughs> and why shouldn't she? Did you see that wrecking ball? That wrecking ball needs to go see one of the few women's clinics you still have open in Texas. I don't care how many Texas taxpayer dollars that takes, that wrecking ball needs an exam, trust me. That wrecking ball needs a little Cipro. Okay, look. All right, so then Miley comes out and she's wearing like a bedazzled corset and my mom just can't believe what she's seeing, right? So she had the knots in her head, remember? So then my mother says, and I quote, Jesus Christ, Kathleen, what's happened to Molly Cyrus? <laughs> I know, Molly, I know, I should have corrected her once again. I should have said, mother, her name is Miley, you've pronounced it incorrectly, but then I was like, oh, I have shows coming up in San Antonio. Um, <laughs> So then my mom says, what the Christ has happened to her hair for Christ's sake? Look at Molly Cyrus with those two knots on her head. Can't she have one of her gays comb her hair out? God damn it. <laughs> that is a good point. All right, so, so anyway, then, you know, she takes off the corset and then Miley starts twerking. Now, of course, your Maggie doesn't know from the twerk, right? So my mom keeps saying, Jesus, why does she keep bending over? Did she lose a contact lens? <laughs> Is there some loose change on the floor, Kathleen? What's going on? Did she throw her back out? And then he walks down the stage in the striped suit, singing Blurred Lines. I know you love him, but I want you to know 
that your Maggie Griffin's quote was, and this is a direct quote, Jesus Christ, Kathleen, why is Molly Cyrus grinding up against that nice Alan Thick? <laughs> hetero cruise. I think I've done six gay cruises. I've never gotten on the boat without seeing the giant ice cock sculpture. <laughs> Can I please tell you about the gay cruise? Because it is so, you have to hear it to believe it. All right, straights, don't, don't peace out straights, because let me tell you something. We all have something to learn, and ladies in particular, listen up, because let me tell you something about the gays. They are organized. When it comes to what, yes. When it comes to what they want sexually, they are color-coded, they are organized, they are making lists, they are specific, they are tops, bottoms, or versatiles. You better let me know. I have I've never even been on a hetero cruise. I think I've done six gay cruises. I've never gotten on the boat without seeing the giant ice cock sculpture. <laughs> And you know those gays are specific about chiseling the veins. <laughs> oh yeah, they are tweaking and they are getting it right. They are getting it right. They are doing some Edward scissor hands. They'll make a bush, manscape it, get a taint just right, yes. It is off the chain fun and crazy. Okay, now I, um, I actually, oh, I also want to tell you that like any cruise, you know, usually they're big and they're luxurious and they're two pools. I'm just going to be honest and tell you on a gay cruise what the jacuzzi is called. Egg drop soup. Take it in, picture it, picture it, take it in, deal with it, deal with it. Some stuff on that boat that I had to bring to the San Antonio audience. All right, so, of course. First of all, once again, ladies, we really should learn. Okay, they have parties, and they're named with themes that might almost sound like, kind of, like, sexually insensitive in a way, but the gays, once they're at sea, f*** it, it is all bets are off. It is boys at sea. Okay, so I look on the activities list, and the first thing I see is a dog tag dance. Normally, <laughs> I love that you're cheering that. Normally, you would think like, you can't treat these people like dogs. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Woof, woof. All right, so this, <laughs> this, is, this is a themed dance where the boys all show up with military dog tags with dots on them. It is color-coded. So some gay had to go to Office Depot or Home Depot and just get sheets and sheets of dots. And if you're wearing a red dot, it means no way. A yellow dot means give me a couple of drinks. A green dot means it's go time. <laughs> You've done it again. You've out-organized us, out-thought us again. And by the way, I'm calling bullshit on the red dots. That's some bullshit. You know some reds, they rip it off. And where's a green one? All right. Okay, so I, the, okay, I dragged the boyfriend on the cruise, so I have to tell you about that part. This poor guy, I had to blow him so many times just for him to get through the day. Why not? If I have to gag, so be it. All right, now. I'm a lady. So, so anyway, <laughs> our, our cabin was at the end of the hall and I do, I'm, I'm twisted. I do shit called pee polling. I spent half that trip at my own. <laughs> you do that too? Me too. I spent half the trip like this watching the gays. Honey, come here. Honey, 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 come here. Oh my God. One of us bent over like a pretzel. Come here. I had more fun peepholing the boys on the gay cruise. Okay, so first of all, it, what they do is they decorate all the doorways, right? So we were next to a couple of bears. If you don't know what bears are, <laughs> in the gay community, the bears are the gentlemen with a little more meat on their bones, kind of hairy, they can enjoy a meal. Oh yeah, if I, was, if I was a gay guy, I would totally be a bear. They're the only type of gay that could eat. They're the only ones allowed to eat, yeah. I would be like Smokey the Bear. I would live in a tree and eat honey. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, so next to us were two very sweet bears, and they were celebrating being together for like 25 years. And let me tell you, wonderful, and of course we respect them, but let me tell you, they were in such the wrong hallway. All right, so the first night, and I don't know the drugs, I don't know the MDNA, Molly, Mally, whatever it's called. Okay, but whatever, I'm going to just allege that the bears next to us were on some sort of drug that made you very happy and very slow. Very loving and rainbows and lollipops, but very slow. So I'm gonna describe what I saw outside my peephole, but what you should know is that it went on for six hours. So I looked out once and I just see this bear decorating his door just like this. that just said Paris. I mean, it was lovely, <laughs> which is probably where they met or something. Okay, but what they didn't know is the rest of the hallway was all, we called them the Walter Whites, because there was one theme party called the Hero or Anti-Hero Party, and our whole hallway went dressed as Walter White with the apron and nothing else. <laughs> oh yes, these were party boys, and they had fake meth, and they kept giving it to me, and I'm like, I'm like that that'd be walking around customs going, look, the gays made some hilarious fake meth. It's real, broke down palace. So, <laughs> so <laughs> all right, so the bears were next to us and their doors were all about love and light and rainbows and love. And then the Walter Whites were all about the like scheduling sex. And I am not kidding. These gays had dry erase boards and Sharpies scheduling blowjobs. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> And on the day of my shows, I did two shows, I was actually quite flattered because their dry erase board would say things like, you know, 3.30, rim job. 6.30, show with Kathy, yay. 8.30, Jeff, sloppy bottom. Very specific. <laughs> Ladies, what have we been doing? We could have been just scheduling sex on a dry erase board all these years with dots from Home Depot, office de Okay, so there's also something called the tender boat. If you've ever been on a cruise, there's the big ship. <laughs> you should get nervous. I can feel people like, oh, uh oh, I did some shit on the tender boat. I... <laughs> Maybe one of you were there. All right, so, so anyway, uh, the tender boat is the smaller boat that takes you from the big ship to the port, right? So like I said, I'm there with the straight boyfriend, right? And you know, it's a boat full of like muscly gay dudes, right? And they've been partying and it's the middle of the night. And so they get on the boat and then one guy recognizes me and he, I'm just gonna tell it like it is because I feel like I said in the LGBT community, all bets are off when you boys are together, have at it. I am not judging, say whatever the you want. So I'm there and I'm there with the straight boyfriend and he's wearing like a vintage Lakers t-shirt. And one guy just for no reason goes, way to announce your straightness. <laughs> and so, I swear to God, the boyfriend looks at me and he goes, uh, these dudes are big. I'm like, yeah, don't, don't, don't start some shit. Like these are, it's, an, it's called an army for a reason. Anyway. And then, and then one guy was wearing a wife beater and of course he was like roided out to here. And he just, honestly, he looked at my boyfriend and just ripped it and didn't say a word. And I'm like, I'm like, stay calm, I got this. I got, these are my people, these are my people. So then one guy started talking to me and he was wasted. And he's like, oh my God, Miss Griffin, I'm wasted. I shouldn't be saying that, oh, you're so funny. And I just, okay, so he's wasted, he's going on. Then there's another gaggle of gays who decide to give the original gay a beat down for no reason. For no reason, they pack up like a dog pack and they're like, don't talk to her, girl. And they're calling him her and shit. And I'm like, oh, it's getting real. It's getting real on the tender boat. And he's like, oh, you shut up, I'm trying to talk to Miss Griffin. And then from the other group, he goes, don't even talk to him. He's been with 10 men today alone. His <laughs> has been in the infirmary. <laughs> now, I'm not a physician. How does just your 
asshole, go to the infirmary. Is there a teeny gurney that takes you? Teeny little Ivy. All right, so you know I love that she got a million dollars from Jenny Craig to be their spokesperson. A million dollars, and then she ate it. Um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but it turns out I legitimately have set a record. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Stuart from the Guinness Book of World Records. Stuart? How about this? It gives uh, me great pleasure, and it's a tremendous honor to be here tonight with you uh, as I present you with this certificate, Kathy Griffin, recognizing you as the Guinness World Record holder for the most televised stand-up specials by a comedian with an incredible 19 shows. You are officially what? amazing. Congratulations. Well done. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well done. Congratulations. And by the way, with this one tonight, when it airs, it'll be 20, mother I know you love the behind the scenes stories, so I'm gonna just tell you about someone I worked with recently. And before I even say her name, I'm gonna give her credit for having a really good sense of humor because I've been kind of tough on her over the years. And she invited me to be on her new show. And I wanna say that I'm very thankful for that. She also asked me not to put her in my act anymore. And I am not able to oblige at this time. <laughs> you wanna hear about Kirstie Alley? You guys, this was so awesome. First of all, she has a new show coming out. It's called Kirsty. It's gonna be great. She's great. She's legit crazy. So that's what I love about her. I loved her on Dancing with the Stars. I love when she was on Oprah and famously didn't lose any weight and just wore pantyhose and a bra and said she did. Allegedly. And you know, you know I love that she got a million dollars from Jenny Craig to be their spokesperson. A million dollars. And then she ate it. Um, <laughs> That's my kind of gal. Remember when she was the spokesperson for Pier 1 and they had to keep putting those wicker baskets higher and higher? <laughs> and then she ate it. Ow! Um, <laughs> but I loved her on Dancing with the Stars and I loved her, of course, on Cheers. And, you know, so I was very flattered that they, like, let me be on her show, right? So I show up and, as you know, I'm, I'm always on the lookout, right? So I'm not gonna go up and like start something with a celebrity, but I'm watching, I'm always interested. I like the nuance. And when I say she's legit crazy, let me explain. I don't fall for the act of someone acting like they're crazy. I'm so crazy at the office party, I put a lampshade on my head. You're the most pedestrian person here. I'm looking for the crazy person in the corner who's maybe like chewing their thumb saying, don't look at me. That's, <laughs> that's the real deal. And then when you throw in Scientology, I am in. I am in. Okay, so at the time, you know that Leah Remini from The King of Queens and The Talk, you know Leah Remini has escaped Scientology. And she's really talking about it more than any celebrity ever has. So I'm fascinated by that. So at the time, Kirstie was in like a twat war with Leah Remini about Leah leaving Scientology. You can look up any of this. Okay, so I like Leah Remini. By the way, I like anybody and any, whatever their political leaning or religion, I'm gonna make fun of you, but I don't care. Like I'm not one of those where I don't like you if you're like a Saitai or if you're a conservative, like I don't do, roll like that. I'll make fun of you, but anyway, it's all on the table. But I thought it was funny because Kirstie and Leah used to be really good friends, right? Now, this is why I like Leah Remini. One time, I was standing in line behind her on the red carpet for the Emmys, and it was really hot, and I was getting the ass crack sweat, and we were <laughs> like, you know, I said, a, I said a joke to her, and I said, oh, it's so hot. I, I can honestly feel my makeup melting off. And Leah Remini just said this thing to me that I will never forget. She said, if you cut in front of me, I will punch you in the... That's my kind of gal. That is my kind of gal. So, watching her leave Scientology has been fantastic because I'm thinking she's going to punch them all in the on the way out. <laughs> Especially John Travolta. Hey! I know. I know when I got too far. I have a disorder. I can't stop myself. I have self-diagnosed Tourette's syndrome. 
I've never been told by an actual physician, although I do know Dr. Lisa Masterson, Dr. Oz, and Dr. Drew, but I have diagnosed myself with Tourette's. Anyway, so, so I get to work with Kirstie Alley for five days in a row. And the first day I show up, and you know, she's really quite beautiful. She has beautiful blue eyes. And I'm just gonna say something I know. I'm gonna tell you a couple things I just noticed. And then I'm just gonna tell you, okay? All right, she came to work every day in a nice outfit, right? Like a really nice outfit that looks expensive. And she's a very wealthy, successful woman, right? But I'm just gonna say this. It was just an observation. It looked like she slept in it. <laughs> Red flag, right? Did you ever know one of those? Where you're like, good morning, that's a great outfit. Did you put it on last night at eight? It, I'm just, my Scooby ears just went up for one second. But I was fascinated that, like I just imagined her in her mansion, and you know she has like ferrets and all these like wild animals, and I imagined her just putting on a nice outfit every night at eight and then just going to bed. <laughs> and just coming to work in the morning. I don't, I don't know if that's the case. Okay, then I couldn't help but notice she had the cracked iPhone. Sure sign of crazy, correct? <laughs> How could she let me see the cracked iPhone? Are you kidding me? So then, she keeps checking the weather in Clearwater, Florida, which is the hub of Scientology. That's funny shit to me. You got a cracked iPhone and you're compulsively checking the weather in Clearwater. Who the fuck cares what it's like in Clearwater? I mean, if you live there, it makes sense, but we're in Los Angeles doing a television show. So then she sees me looking at her cracked iPhone and you know I'm thinking she threw it at an assistant. I'm just assuming she pulled an Naomi Campbell. And, or maybe Leah Remini went to punch her in the and the phone stopped it. I don't know, but she actually was quite delightful and she kept calling me Kathy Griffin. She kept saying, you're not gonna put me in your act, are you Kathy Griffin? And I just said, yes, yes. <laughs> so then I would see the cracked iPhone and she would say, well, I hope this isn't gonna be in your act. I'm like, yes, of course it is. And she was nice though. And so the first day we worked together, we took a photo together and I was holding a script of the show, Kirsty, and she twatted it out and I twatted it out. And she wrote something very nice, and I wrote something nice, and I was like, you know, good for her. Then five hours later, I look on her Twitter, at Kirstie Alley, I strongly encourage you to follow. And five hours later, it says, today has been one of the most horrible days in my life. I hope goodness prevails. Something like that, okay. Now, you know, I'm at home by myself, getting all paranoid, like, what the f are those side ties gonna do to me? What's happening? When is the spaceship coming down? What's happening? Who's gonna punch me in the Who's gonna punch me in the Okay, so the next day, I go into the Kirstie show again, and I'm kind of, you know, stepping a little softly, because I've read the tweet. First, there's the nice one, then there's the, it's been the most horrible day of my life, and I'm like, morning, Kirstie. And she's like, hello, Kathy Griffin. And I go, how's, um, how's everything going? We good? She's like, yes, great. And I go, okay, so I'm just wondering, are you, are you feeling well? Yes, why, Kathy Griffin? Uh, because five hours after our picture, you twatted that it was the most horrible day of your life and you hoped goodness prevails. Oh, no, I didn't. You're saying that for your act, Kathy Griffin. I go, here it is. And then she just goes, oh, I forgot. <laughs> well, I'm not going to argue with her. I forgot. I'm like, okay, well. I go, did you get hacked? She goes, no. I said, okay, well. Good to see you. I was just... Can I steam something for you? I didn't know what to say. So, <laughs> ladies, let me just talk to you for a second. If you're dating a guy or seeing a guy and just out of the blue, he says the phrase, as you know, I ain't gay. <laughs> He's sucking <laughs> I, I, I... All right, you've been so wonderful. I gotta share something with you. I, I have a new prison letter. I just got it two weeks ago. And first of all, let's just be honest. I'm pretty famous. I, and a lot of men are sexually attracted to me. Okay. I, obviously. Now I'm not saying they're not all, um, incarcerated. Uh, some of them are. You know, I don't judge. And so this gentleman has actually been, been writing me for a few years, and I just want you to know that these letters come to my home. 
not the agent's office or the publicist. No, they come to my home because in one of the letters he revealed that he actually worked on the um, tile in one of the bathrooms and described pretty much every inch of my house. I'm good. You guys are the ones who are crazy. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hello, Kathy. I surely hope and pray that you are doing dynamic. <laughs> this has been quite an experience for me, which I think prison would be quite an experience, so I get it. I, I, I'm with him. I've been trying to keep my sense of humor, which you have to with the ass rapes. You have to, uh, you've got to stay centered and just, whew, got to laugh. All right. I was so happy to hear you have a boyfriend. That gives me hope. The world can be so turned around right now. And I think he's talking about the government shutdown, probably congressional. <laughs> you know, we're all worried. And then he says, out of the blue, as you know, I ain't gay. Okay. <laughs> Ladies, let me just talk to you for a second. If you're dating a guy or seeing a guy, and just out of the blue, he says the phrase, as you know, I ain't gay. He's sucking <laughs> Possibly, possibly. I've been locked up eight years now and I've had no sudden hard-ons in the shower and no visions of young white boy booty while sleeping. <laughs> I've grown very fond of my hands. I love my hands. I now know why Michael Jackson had love for the glove. He says, so, you got yourself a 34-year-old, huh? That's okay, he's a poodle, baby. He ain't laying no real pipe, I bet. You talk like you know how to get down, but I can't imagine you with a real tribesman like me. Six foot one, 230 pounds of Ganganese coxman. Sir Midas Erectus from the tribe of Ganga, located in the southern tip of Ghana, the blackest region in Africa. And then he signs it, smiley face. Good night, you have been so wonderful to me. I love you, San Antonio.